I didn't do that. I didn't push start on on the YouTube part. But yeah, y'all know what all that stuff is. So yeah, um, seriously, seriously, like that's how much um, the folks mean to me that help us out with all this stuff. I memorized the entire royalty tier on um, uh, from the Patreon. So I call I call out all these people from memory. Okay. Um, and of course, those are the ones who, once you hit that tier, we develop an actual relationship. Like I, I, I call you up and, and we talk about stuff. I give gaming advice and all of those things. Uh, another big announcement. Okay. Really big, big announcement on that. Um, on, I believe, I think, let me double check. I'm checking my calendar on the 31st of May. I will be um, GMing um, live, um, you know, live in front of people over at the Guild Hall in Whittier, California. Um, for those of you guys that like what I do out here um, and you're like, you know what? I kind of like to be at one of his tables. I think he would be cool to run a one shot. Well, um, go to roaminggdragongames.com. Sign up for one of my tables at $15 plus the minimum for the venue. Um, and that'll be on May 31st. Okay, so um, I can take up to eight people. I can only GM for eight people. Um, I can go for 10 people at my table, but that starts to get really, really difficult um, to go. So I, I, I top it out at eight. Hey, what's going on, Sat Strange Little Man? Um, thank you so much and dude, kill it at your game today. All right. So today we're going to be talking about different types of role playing games because D and D may be the most popular. Okay. Might be the most popular, but it ain't the only game out there. All right. But of course we'll start with D and D. All right. Um, because that's the one that everybody knows, but here's the thing. I describe um, playing role-playing games in the same way to every person that I talk to. You write an outline for a story, um, and you allow your allow your characters or your players, your friends, to create characters for your story, and then you guys play out the story, knowing that your friends have absolutely no obligation <laughs> to stick to the outline that you wrote. That really is, and it, and it all comes down to, you know, everything beyond that comes down to game mechanics and things like that, all right? Um, it's really big, it's really open, and a lot of people get a little intimidated, and that's fair, all right? That is very, very fair. Oh, yeah, I didn't put up, um, I didn't put up the, um, the... Here you go. Yeah, we got a Discord. I got to keep reminding myself of that, which I don't know why. That's the main way that you guys get a hold of me. Um, <laughs> so there you go. The Discord is down there. Um, so what does that mean? That means um, you can create a story, but there are different types of stories that you can write. And there are different games that link with those stories okay um we'll start with dungeons and dragons all right now dungeons and dragons i guess you can say the king of all role-playing games because it's it, it was the first you know it was the first one to go mainstream it was the first one to hit the market okay but here's the thing um D, &D is created for a very 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 specific type of gaming experience it says so in the name dungeons and drag guns all right and they call it an adventure game and what an adventure is under those circumstances are number one exploration all right we go on the adventures i want you to think like indiana jones all right indiana jones um you're going to a place, you're dodging traps, you're figuring out puzzles so that you could get the MacGuffin, all right? Sometimes you're chased by a giant boulder. Sometimes you lose, um, um, sometimes you lose the character that you started the game with because they stepped on a trap and got, uh, 
kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I mean that, that's, <laughs> no, not Guildhall tonight on the 31st, uh, Vixen. Um, so yeah, the 31st. Um, so, um, yeah, it, it's an adventure game. You're looking through stuff, you're going through traps, you're running from armies, things like that. Um, it's in the fantasy setting, okay? But your setting is just the skin on top of the, on top of the tone of the story that you're doing. Um, and it's secondary thing, or should I say the other thing is tied for the first. This is adventure and combat simulation. This is huge. Okay, and that comes down to D&D's roots. Okay, D&D's roots, um, it started as a tabletop miniatures game called Chainmail. And a tabletop miniatures game is let's just do the fighting. That's it. Not why are we fighting, just who are we fighting and how do I make them stop being there? All right, you, you get me on that? Good, good, good. Um, so this is important. This is really, really important for um, understanding D&D and how to approach it, all right? Um, most people, when they play D&D, they're like, yes, I want to swash that buckler. I want to swing on stuff. I want to run from the whole thing, and I want to feel powerful and cool. Fireball, fireball, fire, fireball. Run through the trap, reach back, grab my hat, put it on. I'm cool. Da-da-da-da. Da-da-da. Da-da-da-da. Da, 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 da. And that's all great. It happens to be in a fantasy setting. So then you and your friends can be the adventurers or you guys can be uh, Beowulf or um, Jason's Argonauts or Odysseus's crew. You know, you can do that type of thing. Um, it's based on going through like fantasy stories where heroes got to go somewhere, get a thing, fight an army, all that stuff. Um, but it's not the only type of role-playing game there is out there. There's another game out there that's in second place, and this one is huge, okay? Not as big as Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. And if you're thinking, well, the second most popular game is Pathfinder. Wrong! Yeah, it's not Pathfinder. It is Call of Cthulhu, all right? And this is a game where you are playing a human being in the world of H.P. Lovecraft. Ah, all right. Now, the uh, Call of Cthulhu, and I, I, of course, I have to bring these games up first, okay? Because they are the two in, they are two points in the very balanced shape of types of role-playing games there are out there. Now, one, it's skill-based, not experience-based, all right? But we'll get to that a little later on in the show. But Call of Cthulhu is an advent is not an adventure game. Okay, it is a skill-based game based on investigation. All right. What I've seen over my decades, my decades of GMing is um when you run D&D, people are like, "Yes, adventure. Oh, hey, all the conquering hero." And then when they go to Call of Cthulhu, they're like, adventure, oh, hell, oh my God. You know, because the Call of Cthulhu is not built for adventuring. Okay, it is not an adventure. It's an investigation. Um, in D&D, you get spells and you throw stuff and, and, and you throw, you get magical artifacts and you get magical items and all these things make you better. And you're heading toward a happy ending where you and your friends win and you feel special and great. I don't know if any of you guys, well, I know a lot of you guys have, but if you've never read a short story by H.P. Lovecraft, happy endings are not what he did. All right. Um, most most um most call of cthulhu or sorry most hp lovecraft short stories or horror novels about an indifferent universe with things that are older than anything that you can imagine whose very presence will drive everyone insane and break the entire world and you are in an adventure where either you're just finding out that this is happening and 
now you got to deal with what with whatever else or um you find out that this is the world that you live in um because of the plot of the story now the number one thing about call of cthulhu is that it is a game based on investigation so you and your party might end up being invited somewhere like to a party in the woods of new england from your old rich friend um and now mr body is murdered and you and your friends now have to prove that it wasn't you figure out who did it and if um and if you figure out that none of you did it, but it is something that is neither a piece of lunch meat nor an auto part, but something hideous and unholy from betwixt the twain, that man should not know that the host of the house was then cahoots with in order to understand the deepest knowledge about the dark places in the universe in order to write their novels. Um, now what? <laughs> Um, and that's Call of Cthulhu. So, you know, I mentioned Indiana Jones and the 13th Warrior for Dungeons and Dragons, where for Call of Cthulhu, you got to think things like um, Event Horizon, um, Clue, um, um, and all the H.P. Lovecraft inspired movies that came out in the 80s, like Herbert West Reanimator and um from beyond and you know um dagon you know things like that where you don't have any superpowers you uh, um you might might know you might just have a gun and the things that you're at uh, that you're going against might be bulletproof or there might be more of them than you got access to bullets so you know um and these games are full of puzzles and investigation and how am i going to get out of this while finding out more about everything drives my character further and further over the edge of insanity how can i get it right you know how can i come back how can i survive this you know a lot of the times it is survival horror because a lot of GMs like doing that for some reason. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not about seeking adventure. It's more you best believe in ghost stories because you're in one, you know, type of thing. Um, those are the two main spectrums of the types of role playing games there are out there. Um, where you've got your White Wolf games, like Vampire the Requiem. Um, and with that, you've really got, um, you've got politics, um, really has a big place in that gaming system. It's intrigue, who is trying to get what power to what end. And you're doing all of these things for power while trying not to be a monster you know, in a world that is dark and full of monsters. And it's so dark. And the world itself is so dark that it's called the world of darkness, you know? Um, so, I mean, really, that 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 is kind of a thing. But you've got, like, investigation, um, political intrigue and social encounters, and adventure based on fighting. Um, if you go in to any of these games with a preeminent focus on what one of the other types of games are based on, you are not going to have a good time. Um, if you go into Call of Cthulhu, um, if you are a normal Call of Cthulhu player, I play Call of Cthulhu, I'm about the investigation. I'm about looking for clues. And, oh my God, is that a magic book? Yeah, I ain't picking that thing up. Magic books lead to crazy. I don't want to go crazy. And last time I read one of these magic books, I summoned something um, that was a color heretofore never seen before man, and Nicolas Cage took my house. Um, you know, then you're not going to have a whole lot of fun in D&D, which is all about finding the magical items, finding the magic books. Like you find all those things, but then you're the guy that's going, no, no, you shouldn't open this. Your party is going to get real tired of you real fast. You know, um, if you're used to, um, if you're used to games about 
political intrigue. Um, and you're like, yes, I shall navigate the halls of power so that I can control everything. And you go into Dungeons and Dragons. Again, your players might get sick of you real quick. All right, there are a couple of things like Dragon Heist, if you will. You know, you got like other games like Blades in the Dark that are like, hey, this is about the heist and robbing stuff and and the puzzles and stuff. But that kind of goes more into the Call of Cthulhu investigation type thing. Um, I brought up the three games I brought up because they are intrinsic to the types of games they are. They are the poster games for each one. What's going on, Daryl? Um, so if you're used to playing... Like I said, Vampire the Masquerade, um, and you try and go into Dungeons and Dragons going, yes, I am a monster, but I will, I will amass power and take over the world. You know, your party probably isn't going to let you do that because they're like, we're here to vanquish evil and take its stuff, you know? So that's going to be a, re uh, which one, you know? Um, <laughs> Bunnies and Burrows is closest to Dungeons and Dragons, just like Dungeons and Doggies is, Neon. Um, and if you're used to games, um, like Dungeons and Dragons, and you're going, adventure, excitement, you know, and you sit down at a Call of Cthulhu table, that's all about investigation, keeping your head down. Don't get into a fight, bullets hurt, you know, um... Uh, <laughs> then you're not going to have that much fun. And I know this one from personal experience, because as soon as something not human, but something that reeks of rotten fish that goes slump, slump, slump toward you and extends something that looks like a tentacle that's been interwoven with copper wire reaches out to you and you go, I hit it with my ax. You're not going to last very long. And the moment you can actually perceive that you're going to go a little bit crazy. <laughs> and once you go a little bit crazy in Call of Cthulhu, you start seeing things differently or attacking your own um, characters or you start um, getting hit with um, penalties to your skills. And it's like, why am I playing this? This isn't fun. Um, and the thing is, it can be, but not if you're looking for the same flavor of fun that you would get from Dungeons and Dragons. Now, it's interesting because some people that go from Call of Cthulhu to Vampire the Masquerade. Um, <laughs> oh, what's going on, Jess and King? Actually, I didn't do a Doctor Strange review. Um, don't worry about it. Uh, but we are talking about different types of role-playing games right now. Um, so, yeah. So, if um, a lot of players go from Call of Cthulhu to the White Wolf world because the White Wolf, or sorry, the World of Darkness, that D10 system, is very well based on a Lovecraftian type universe you know there are big things out there that will drive you mad if you know them now if you had um if you had um oh well thank you you saw our moon knight stuff um thank you very oh yeah you saw the moon knight reviews on thursday and i i really appreciate that um and so yeah um oh we'll be getting into that we'll we'll be getting into that and thank you jess and king that that wow I, i'm really uh, i'm loving that um, but yeah, so, uh, the world of darkness itself is really dark and really dismal and the police, when you need them, will be woefully inept <laughs> and when they're after you, they will be surprisingly efficient and well-armed. Um, so those two cross over well, but, um, but when it comes to high adventure games and things like that, like Dungeons and Dragons, um, like Shadowrun, um, Spelljammer, things like that, um, 7C, um, those are games that you can go to, um, hang on, mm. those are games that you can go to that have the zip bow, uh, zip pow bang pop type of things if that's your jam, all right, if you're looking into stuff like this, you get games like Dungeons and Dragons, um, you get games like Mutants and Masterminds. You can even have games like Savage Worlds, which really leans into the Indiana Jones aspect of exploring a strange new world and trying to find something. 
Um, and when you look at these things, you've got like your high more than human systems and your low and your below human systems. Okay. So dealing with Call of Cthulhu, you are a person. That is it. And pretty much everything from Delta Green or Chaosium, those two companies, bread and butter is of that horror. Delta Green does um, cyberpunk Cthulhu. So you can have augmentations and big guns. But from there, you go from in the mouth of madness to event horizon. You, you get what I mean? Um, <laughs> so it is a really, really, really important thing to understand what the game you're playing was designed to do okay um when i invite people to role play i ask them what kind of stories they like and why because that helps me know what games they might want to go to now there's been a huge love of post apocalyptica with my white friends okay they love walking dead and fallout those are their two Big, they, they love a burned down world with no resources where raiders can come beat you up and take your stuff. They love that. Okay. Um, I grew up in the middle of a gang war. Not exactly my thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I do record playing. I, I do. Um, matter of fact, I would, be, I would normally be running a game. Um, I run D&D on every other Monday most Wednesdays, some Thursdays, and um, it's there. Uh, but yeah, I don't actually play video games on the channel. This is all role-playing games and tabletop um, board games and tabletop minis games. So the stuff that you need to be in the same room with a person to do generally, so if you give them any crap that you would when you're playing um, Fortnite, you could get punched in the mouth. I'm a big fan of that. Um, <laughs> so... I, I ask all these questions when it comes to new role players because a lot of people already have an idea of the kinds of stories they want to be in, all right? Um, sort of. I played the Dresden Files card game on here, okay? Um, and the Dresden Files card game, I actually have the physical copy, and I play that on Steam with other people when they can't come over, like, for the past two years because of, um, because of the pandemic. Um, but, yeah. Um, eventually, I might start playing tabletop miniatures games if I can get tabletop simulator to work and find people to do it with so we can be like, ah, no, we're talking all that crap now. Look at that. Oh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but we'll we'll talk about that at a different time as well. Um, so. Um, but some people want to role play augmented reality or different reality, like the people who like playing World of Darkness. You know, you're playing something um outside of humanity in the modern world so how do you play being an outsider um i myself i thought it was okay for a little while a little too political for my tastes um and i spent my adolescent hood and most of my adulthood in white spaces so role playing um an outsider is not exactly role playing for me but i do love mage the ascension because if i'm going to be an outsider i want to understand the universe as it goes and i want to amass so much power so that i can understand also not really role playing for me so <laughs> um but it's the part of not role playing i enjoy um now neon arlecchino brings up um brings up the dress and files card game I do run the Dresden Files RPG because I love the Dresden Files. I love the book series. And that is modern fantasy. However, it is still more more noir. Okay, it's still, it's closer to Call of Cthulhu. Less insanity, but more monsters that can kick your butt. Bullets hurt. And uh, <laughs> and it's not about big wang bang, uh, whiz how bang pop it's really about solving the case um doing the mystery and saving people and yeah if you guys have noticed if you've been watching the channel for a while you notice i'm all about saving people and helping people that can't help themselves and all that stuff fine i'm a, i'm an all right person all right i don't want to say i'm a good person um because most people who have to say that generally aren't and i think they're trying to convince themselves more than they're trying to convince you for the record i'm in a really bad mood today Tune in at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time 
because we're going to talk about Buffalo and that is going to be the not safe for work cast. Um, but I'm only doing it on Twitch. I'm not going to take it to YouTube because I'm already in danger of getting hate rated. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll have um, like my boy Nerd Soul and maybe my guys from um, the Nerdy Brew in here to barbershop this out because, yeah, there's a lot we got to talk about. Um, but yeah, so um, but we're not talking mechanics. OK, understand we're not exactly talking game mechanics, although game mechanics do support what the intentions of the game are. Now, I get a lot of questions about D&D. Uh, so many questions about D&D. And here's the thing. A lot of people um, fall into a really big mistake when it comes to RPGs. And this is the approach to them that I put in the description, okay? Um, a lot of folks want to turn Dungeons & Dragons, the adventure game, into a different game, all right? Um, example, D&D is a fantasy setting. There aren't very many rules for automatic weapons. Most people have to homebrew those. Um, Dresden Files has rules for automatic weapons. They have rules for cell phones and technology, but they also have magic and the two don't work together. This tends to be for game balance rules and things like that, because if you can cast fireballs, step into the ethereal plane, summon an army of zombies and use a cell phone, drive a car, um, call, you know, get friends in the government. And, you know, if you have a government job and you can call an airstrike while bringing zombies on, you're not role playing. You're just you're just a menace, okay? There's no stories that you can really do with that except for stories of emotional conflict. Um, and writing a story based on emotional conflict is a lot, a lot of work. So it's not really a whole lot of fun for GMs on a regular basis. You get me on that? Um, but D&D &D was based mainly for medieval combat. So um, crossbows, sure. Archery, sure. A few magic spells, sure. And you can hammerlock and and really cram bullets into archery rules if you want to, as long as you keep them rare. If you guys watched Critical Role or Vox Machina, you'll notice that um, um I forgot the character's name, but the one who actually had the gun, um had a rudimentary gun by today's standards and it was magically cursed and taking over his brain and it was a plot point because that kind of power in a world that that power isn't stable or set or standard can really throw stories off, okay? Um, I, I love the game Esper Genesis. It is the fifth edition rules, but it has a sci-fi setting and these guys went a whole lot into coming up with rules for capital ship combat, dog fighting, all that stuff. So that stuff is actually in that game, so it helps. But a lot of folks want to turn Dungeons and Dragons into, say, cyberpunk, you know, urban fantasy, um, or dystopian urban fantasy, which is mostly about investigation, um, <clears throat> being outnumbered, and not being heroic, but being scrappy. You, you, you see what I mean? Um, there's no renown in games like cyberpunk, <laughs> you know, because if you're really well known in a dystopian future, there will be a corporation that will either make you work for them or take you down. That's and or in gamers terms, make you a non-player character. Um, yes, it is possible to do urban fantasy without it being dystopian. That's where Shadowrun and the Dresden Files and Savage Worlds come in. And then there's also all of the superhero games, which fall under the category of modern fantasy. So there is a lot of stuff that's there. But why? Why do these games have such specialities? Um, primarily, um, I'll tell you guys right off. I'm not a game designer, all right? I am not a game designer. Why am I not a game designer? Because I don't like competition, all right? I don't mean I don't like competing with other game designers, but there is too big, too big 
a faction of people out there that break games for fun. They make the game completely unplayable, and by that I mean winnable without challenge. Um, that's what they do for fun. They do it partly because they like solving puzzles, but there's a large enough swath of people out there like that that'll do it just to show how clever they are, but they will not design a game for themselves. Um, and I can't stand that. That That's just not a thing that's... You guys know these by the actualese. Well, actually, if it were a real sword, Luke Skywalker would have been dead a long time ago. Well, if the lightsaber can do this, then be, 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 and it's like that would end the story. That, you know, there's got to be limitations. And real creativity comes in navigating limitations um, and staying compelling. So, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm wearing the black turtleneck today, guys. Like I said, I'm a little... I ain't as bright as I normally am. So, um, when it comes down to different types of games, it is really important to truly understand um, what the game is about. Now, some um, one of the games that I tend, I, I tend to really like, um, well, I tend to want to like very much, is Seventh Sea. That is all about i'm a pirate but i'm not just a pirate i'm jack sparrow as played by i was gonna say yul brenner but um oh god i forgot his name but he was like the premier um the premier action guy of the 1950s he he played um he played robin hood and you know, when, when you want to be like Inigo Montoya from The Princess Bride or the Dread Pirate Roberts from The Princess Bride or Jack Sparrow from from Pirates of the Caribbean or, you know, when you want to be um, Errol Flynn. No, Errol Flynn. You know, if you want to be that guy, you know, you want to be Errol Flynn, um, you know. 7C is made for that. It's all about I'm fighting five guards and now I'm grabbing a rope and I'm cutting I'm cutting the chandelier and it's going to fall and pull me up and then I'm going to keep doing the sword fight. I mean, it is all, it is all there. You know what I'm talking about? That is what that game is made for. Now, is that game made for the ground breathing and um and homunculus um a, a mass of homunculus flesh inches its way towards you um with what looks to be oddly shaped teeth in a non-euclidean manner that creep toward you and eat your sword no it is made for yes yes not okay yet yeah, nope 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 you see you see what i mean um is it made for alien invasion no, it is not made for being being Will Smith when everybody liked him saying, I got to get me one of these. Uh, welcome to Earth. You know, um, so if you're playing Seven C, you're not going to be like, well, my tunic turned black. I like it, but I don't know what it means. No, no, no. That That's that's not you. You know, you're going to be like, why is the rum gone? What? Why? Oh, the rum. The rum's gone. You know, um, if you're playing um cyberpunk you know you're not gonna be fighting the monster at the top of the building that goes poor peter parker you're all alone no you're gonna be trying to eat noodles and some guy comes up and gives you an origami freaking crane saying you're going back to work <laughs> you know uh you're gonna get beat up by somebody strong asking you how old they are while they recite poems about tears and wet spaces um, because that is how the games were designed. All right. And this is really, really, really important because, um, a lot of people say, you know, stay with theme and stuff like that. But this is, this is how games are written for specific themes in mind and what rules they wrote to support those themes and what rules they left out that would excuse me, overpower those themes or take those themes away, okay? Um, one of my closest friends loves street-level heroes, okay? Loves street-level heroes. Um, and I bring that up because there are too many games from the same company that uses the same miniatures. Um, 
that he and I talk and bond over. The game company is called Night Models Games. And he loves the Batman miniatures game. And that game is about playing the bad guys and their henchmen on the streets of Gotham using guns and clubs and stuff. Or you could play like the Bat Family or the Birds of Prey or the Suicide Squad. But really, um, hey, fried one, <laughs> it's good to have you back. Um, however, super superheroes, too powerful for those games. However, they also have the DC Superheroes game where you play the Justice League and the Green Lantern Corps, and that's the game I like playing. So if he brings his Riddler and his five henchmen against my dark side, we know how that game is gonna go. <laughs> so, um, but the game with the henchmen and stuff, um, doesn't have rules and stats that support going against Dark Side or the Yellow Lantern Corps or the Injustice Gang. You see what I mean? Um, so it would be hard to find balance in those types of things. So um, he's the one that introduced me to the game Blades in the Dark, where we played, um, um, you know, we played... A, a bunch of thieves that were doing a heist and it's got game mechanics based on um essentially your adventure feeling like the italian jobs or oceans 11 you know where you get flashbacks to when you set everything up to do things your way or you know flashbacks to when uh, or flash forwards to what could happen if you do the thing wrong you know it, it's set up in that kind of cinematic way um, and that's all about teamwork and playing your part and all that stuff. And I'm like, cool, cool. I'm, I'm really, really good with that game. But that game is not about adventure. What is that beast running down the streets of this harbor city? I shall conquer it with my knife. You know, that's what D&D is for. That's what um, most of the superhero games are for, like mutants and masterminds and things like that. Ooh, you played Baron Munchausen this weekend. Awesome. You know, yeah, that, again, a good example of an adventure game where you go out and do really cool things versus, versus things like Call of Cthulhu, where you keep your head down. You put your head down, you know, and um, you don't open any magical tomes. And if something comes out of the darkness, you run. You run as fast as you can. You run hard and then you hide. I don't care if you have to hide in a sewer, but always run and hide, you know. Um, and all of these things, again, I make it very clear when I talk about this stuff on air, it comes down to taste, you know. Sometimes I do feel the need to play Call of Cthulhu. You know, sometimes I'm like, OK, um, there is something um, that kind of looks like um, a dragon with cephalopod features, <laughs> you know, um, that have driven the crew of this ship insane. And I know there is a book that will allow me to put it back to sleep. My God, that'll drive you mad. It might. But I'll do it to save the world. You know, I mean, you know, I, um, I, I like or being the college professor that's like, all right, you guys really have to put the Necronomicon down. Oh, you're here looking for pages from the book. I'm sorry. We ain't got it. Yeah, no, we ain't here. It ain't here. I don't know. Um, but you know what? You you must be making this phone call through a crystal ball because you're talking to a corpse. I ain't here, you know. And, um, you know, and sometimes, um. Sometimes I have the mood to play my favorite um, or my old favorite sci-fi game being Paranoia, which is total dystopian, far future um, satire. You know, um, I laugh when I say that that game um, in playing that game, you your character comes as part of a six pack because you're going to die, but you're going to be cloned again and all that stuff. And it is very dystopian. It is like 1984, but it's also satire. You know, um, you know, I would say look up a lot of these games. I'll be doing features on them eventually because some people are like, oh, these games are silly or these. And I'm like, dude, I love all of this stuff because I love playing pretend. I love telling stories. But um, but at the same time, there is also 
not taking the oxygen out of the room for everyone else, you know? Um, now, let me, let me dive into something, because Friedman brings up a good point. And the good point that he brings up is he played two new games over the, over the weekend. Now, this is the 21st century. And one thing that the 21st century has in common with the 20th century is that a lot of people don't like things that are different. <laughs> I play Pathfinder. I don't want to learn Cyberpunk. I play 5th edition. I don't want to learn the Fate system. I play the Fate system. I don't want to learn Shadowrun. And I say it mockingly, but I want you to know that I do understand. Okay, um, a lot of the stuff and we talked about it yesterday, learning the basics takes a lot of work. Okay, but being open to new experiences and being open to new types of RPGs, not just new systems, but um, new things. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I play Warhammer. I don't want to try OPR, you know, um, but when I say keeping your mind open, I say. I, what I mean is broadening your scope, okay? I love D&D. &D. It was the first thing that taught me that this stuff was possible. However, I love role-playing more. You get where I'm going with that? I love, uh, I love RPGs more than I love Dungeons and Dragons because there are so many out there. So many systems, so many ways. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's because I'm right inside your head. I'm, I'm kidding, fried one. I'm not inside your head. I'm behind you. Hi. No, kidding. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so, real talk. Um, there are so many different ways. Like, I love tabletop miniatures games, although I don't like painting models. Um, <laughs> but... You know, I like OPR. I like War Machine. Um, I could like Warhammer 40K if I could afford to play it. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I like playing games. Um, just because you like one thing, don't don't close yourself off to the whole genre. Okay. Um, we first learned this with board games. You know. Um, actually, I think we first learned this with cartoons. All right. Um, there is a world of difference between them animes and the Looney Tunes. And you know what? I watch them both. <laughs> you know, mm. you got Daryl over here on YouTube saying um, it's what characters you play um, than the system. Yeah, exactly. This dude likes the role plan. He likes them role plans. Um, and the thing is, all of this stuff is great. It's all great. It can all be fun. But the biggest determining factors on what is fun isn't what fun means, but it's what you define as fun. Okay? I love, 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 love role playing. I do. I like playing characters. I like exploring strange new worlds. I love seeking out new life and new civilizations. I like boldly going where a lot of people went before me because now I know it's safe. But I ain't never been there, so it was new to me, right? You know, I mean, that that's the stuff I dig. Um, but having been through the gauntlet of um, playing Call of or playing the World of Darkness like it was Call of Cthulhu didn't quite work when I was playing a mage, all right? Um, trying to play Call of Cthulhu um, like I was in D&D, &D, yeah, that didn't go well. I don't think I made it an hour into the first session. Um, and trying to play D&D &D as though I was in Call of Cthulhu, that didn't work well because, you know, I was now that guy. I was, I was too paranoid to adventure. <laughs> you see what I mean? And... These are ways that, uh, again, there is a term out there called role play terrorist. Okay. And the role play terrorist is someone who tries to hammerlock the game into being the type that they want to play, regardless of everyone else at the table. And one of my solutions around this is to check out the type of game they want to play, the type of story they want to be in, and recommend systems 
that support what they already want. All right. Um, I have one of my adventure games where I don't really think that my players want to adventure. Um, they treat everything as though they're in a horror game and they're the black people in horror games. So it's like, oh, what's that? Nope. Ah, none of my business. Nah, nah, uh, you know, and I'm like, you know, oh, have fun at your game, sad, strange little man. Um, you know, and so, yeah, and it's true. People don't know what they really like. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, people really don't know what they like or more to the point. They don't have an understanding of what they like. They know it when they're there, but they can't describe it to you. Um, mm. So, but understanding the things that they do like, you know, it's really easy for me to recommend certain things. I know a lot of character, I know a lot of people who like playing role-playing games and hate combat. And for them, I'm like, dude, you should check out White Wolf or the Fate System. And it's like the face system, yeah, it's all about talking to people and, you know, you can do combat. There's a lot of combat in there, but if you don't want to do combat, there are many more ways to avoid them. Um, you know, or Star Trek actually has a role-playing game system. And that one's actually more based on, um, on space combat. So, you know, pew pew, look at all that stuff. But it has a lot of rules for diplomacy and different races and things like that. But honestly, um, for you GMs out there, it's really important to understand at the core the types of games that you are playing so that you can communicate with your players. Okay, this is important. Um, you have to communicate with your players what they're in for. Um, a lot of people are like, well, yeah, I, wa I want to do like a real combat oriented game. And it's like, okay. Um, D and D is great for that. Um, Warhammer Fantasy is very good for that. Um, there's a lot. There, there's a lot. Um, excuse me. Um, for people that like adventure and going to strange new places, but kind of feeling like that pulp feel, um, there's things like Pulp Cthulhu and Savage Worlds and. Um, a lot of stuff from what used to be AEG, that's Alderac, um, Alderac Entertainment. Um, and they're the ones who did Burning Sands and 7C and, you know, um, and Legends of Five Rings, you know, or Japan, Japan, Japan. Um, and there's a lot of, a lot of games out there that, you know, some not even role-playing games that just focus on the stuff that a lot of people just do. Okay, just do. Um, for people that love the what I'm I'm supposed to go down there and I'm just there to do violence and to win. I'm like, let's play a tabletop uh, miniatures game. You know, that might be up their alley. And um, I have a friend who was a serious football player, just sports. And he's like, violence, violence, violence. And I'm like, interesting. I taught him how to play D&D &D and he wasn't really into it. But the next time he comes over, I'm going to teach him one page rules from OP um, or I'm going to teach him Grimdark Firefight um, from OPR. And I bet he's going to have a really good time because it's taking his team the size of a football team and using tactics and shooting people and getting stuff, you know, or who knows? He might even like Blood Bowl. Um, so seriously speaking, um, there is a lot there when you understand what the game was designed or what intention the game designers had for that type of game. Okay. Um, now I do want to point something out. Daryl is like, uh, not an explorer, very goal oriented. Aha, go get the thing, go rescue the princess, that kind of thing. Now, all this stuff I'm talking about, I'm not saying that the games are designed to do this and this alone. What I'd like to clear up is that the types of games I'm talking about, they have elements of all the other things you can throw into a game. Okay. All the other things. Um, yes. Call of Cthulhu is very much based on investigation, but, but there is combat. There are car chases. There are things like that. There are action elements. Okay. But 
these classifications are what the game was primarily designed around. Um, I was watching Dungeon Dudes on YouTube. Love those guys. And um, they were talking about Blades in the Dark because it does everything for a group of rogues that Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition doesn't do. And they were like, wow, I've been trying to figure out how to do this with D&D for a long time. And this game was already sitting there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it's it's definitely one of those things. So instead of trying to hammer lock um, or instead of trying to force square pegs and round holes, it's really good to understand um, the shape of the hole that you're dealing with. And what other shapes are out there, okay? There are thousands, and I'm not exaggerating, thousands of RPGs that are out there. There are hundreds of tabletop miniatures games, you know? Um, there are so many different types of things that we can do in all of our hobbies that will fit <laughs> yeah, tens of thousands. Thank you. So many things um, out there that we can do that'll fit what we already like that we don't have to force what we're playing to be what we want it to be. Now, that doesn't mean don't come up with house rules and things like that. All right. It, it's a thing. But understand, there comes a point where you have so many house rules that you've redesigned the game. And I've seen this happen a hundred times. Um, again, people trying to make D&D Star Wars and Spelljammer couldn't even do that. <laughs> um, mm. um, ah, there's an H.G. Wells one. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I think that could be done with Savage World. I'm not quite sure, but let me know when you know the name of that. Um, so yeah, so I want you guys to consider, um, with the role-playing games that you play, how were they designed? Okay, how were they designed? What do they really, really focus on? Um, I love, I love Shadowrun. I love Shadowrun. Um, I like Blades in the Dark. I love Mage the Ascension. Um, Ars Magica is an adventure game for magic users. Everything else uh, in it is kind of lackluster, you know? And, however, it's a, it's an adventure game that very much has a main character. You, you see what I mean on that? So, um, no, there is a Star Wars RPG, and that's the thing. <laughs> I mean, again, um, I think the only... Oh, thank you, Q, uh, Q Times. That is awesome. I got a new follower. Um, a, a good amount of the time, there will be a system that already does what you want it to do. And I do appreciate that. Um, most of the time, they're, um, because of the open gaming license, if you're really into D&D &D, um, and you don't really want to learn many new mechanics, there are third-party companies that use um, the game engine of 5e, the advantage-disadvantage system, um, for loads of games, loads of games. Um, again, Esper Genesis is one of them. I know, um, Wizards of the Coast did D&D &D in Ancient Greece, um, you know, with their gods and pantheons and stuff. Um, and there's a bunch of different ones out there. You can use things like drive through RPG or RPG.net or just do a Google, um, or do a Google search, you know, do a Google search for 5e games that aren't fantasy. Um, Again, I'm, I love me the fate system because the fate system is made for character interaction and role playing even more than investigation. The core system itself is made for role playing. Um, it's the gaming engine and system that's used, um, <laughs> um, that's used for, um, the Dresden files and giant robo, you know. I mean, so much so that I took the aspect system from the fate system and crammed it in the fifth edition 
um, it really helps my new players get to know each other and all that stuff. And it, it removes the, or it forces at session zero, the yes, your players know each, or your characters know each other. Now let's come up with how they do so, you know, and what they learned. I, I really, I'm a really big, um, I'm a really big fan. So, um, let's see. What is that? Chummer is a great tool to assist the game. I will check that out, Daryl. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, these are things to think about and things to really examine. Um, things to really examine. Um, what you are playing, what it's designed for. Um, primarily because if you understand this principle, you can notice what the other players at the table are engaged in and not engaged in. And that might help you make suggestions to help everyone at the table have more fun. This is how to inject more oxygen into the room. You know, uh, one of the people I tried playing, I tried teaching D&D, &D, he wanted to play cyberpunk. That is what he wanted to play. He was trying to make D&D into Blade Runner. And I'm like, a uh, different type of game thing and stuff. So he didn't really think about combat. And it took a lot not to kill his character on the first round um, or on the first um, gaming session. And he hasn't come back to the table yet because he's like, oh, my God. Yeah, I don't know if I'm all good with role playing and stuff. And I'm just like, I'm not going to force you. But yeah. Um, so quite honestly understanding the types of rpgs or just the type of thing that you're involved in and moving along with what it was designed for can really help smooth out a lot of the kinks that we may have and allow us to set our expectations within reasonable boundaries um one of the big reasons that you see so many videos on youtube about weapons spell combinations for combat um how to min max your character to do a thousand points of damage per hit you know excuse me is because D, D is an adventure game with a huge emphasis on combat um but you won't see a lot of those for the fate system um you won't see a lot of those for shadow run because those games are not based on combat um, you'll see some for um, a few World of Darkness games, specifically Werewolf, because that is a dark fantasy game based on combat, you know, but Mage, not so much. Changeling, not so much. You see what I mean? Um, so, yeah, let me know what you guys think. And um, I would love to hear some more of your guys' stuff. We've got um, Q times um, that says fate is in one of their top five systems we got daryl over here who loves them some world of darkness just give them those the d10s all those d10s you know i love role-playing games in general so just give me my tubes full of dice so i can just be like i'm rolling dice you know um and let us know the stuff that you think some of the stuff that you might be interested in um feel free to join our discord server and throw up questions um i i answer the questions in the discord server as much as i can i'm juggling a lot of things but i'm in there um i'm in there talking about stuff and putting up announcements and if people are like hey i checked out this systems what are your thoughts on this and of course if you hit me directly i'll be happy to answer your questions and things like that um but we're out of time for today um, so I want to thank you guys for showing up. Q times, thank you so much for the following. Um, Jess and Kings, thanks for reaching out, man. Seriously. Um, so today is Tuesday. Tomorrow we have another episode of Dark Side of the Room, which is kind of fun. We'll be having another one of these discussions. And um, yeah, Neon, we have yeah, Neon, you're the meme guy for the Discord server. So yeah, you you do that thing. Um, I do want to put out an announcement in 45 minutes. We're having a not safe for work discussion on this Buffalo shooting that happened on Saturday. Um, there's a lot of stuff involved with it. And I'm feeling my people would say I'm feeling some kind of way. Um, however, I am feel I am filled with frustration and exhaustion. And I'm going to talk about it. Um, 
I'm not doing it on YouTube because like I said, I, I'm already in danger of hate raids that are out there. And um, yeah, so, but if you guys want to join the discussion, it's set for 45 minutes from now. That's five o'clock Pacific Standard Time, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And um, yeah, join us for that discussion because I don't really like to get political and I don't do that kind of stuff on these shows, but a lot of this stuff has got to be talked about, okay? Um, so with that, I got to say thank you guys for showing up. Major shout outs to my people in NP City. Um, and of course, you know, Daryl Couch over there on YouTube holding it down. Uh, my people in NPC City, like Ox 2, Alien Gathering, um, Black and White, Now in Color, Casino Thanks, Commander Root, Fried One, I'm loving that you're back. Uh, Jessen King, thanks for being here. Caddy Na, uh, Miss Moose a lot. Um, I'll be reaching out to you sometime this week or feel free to give me a call. I'm free for the next 45 minutes. Um, Neon Arlequino, Q Times, Vixabel Cosplay. Thank you guys for joining us here today. And remember, if any of you guys are ever told that you can't like something or be part of a community or something or just have the hobbies you like, because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, disabilities, or your budget, you can tell those people to take any of those cards they're trying to pull on you and put them back in the deck. Um, and thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you next time on the dark side of the room. Join us here on Twitch in 45 minutes for the discussion on, on Buffalo. All right, later.